Good morning. Well, I'm back here at St. Mary's Vale. Um, now, today is all about autumn photography. The light is fantastic. The tree colors are just right. And it's just, it's perfect. Now, um, I did a, a, a video here um, uh, a couple of weeks ago that I'll put up in a, um, in a link now. And that was all about my um, Nikon Z7. Um, I've been waiting for these autumn colors to come out. Today is all about looking for autumn color, uh, woodland composition, um, and just looking for those subtle changes um, from last time I was here as well. So let's make a start over here. I don't know if you can just about see it. The light is coming in on this fantastic tree. And one of the things with woodland composition, which is really important, is to go around the subject. So I'm going to try photographing this from many, many different uh, kind of perspectives and angles and just see how we go. Now, I photographed this tree before and it was bright green, just like summer, really. But now it's turned a gorgeous uh, yellowy orange and it's looking fantastic. So let's see what we can do. Right, this composition is just glorious. The sun is, is coming in um, and the colors are just quite something. It is absolutely stunning. So um, I've just put it on a tripod uh, really to get um, more ISO quality because I've been shooting handheld, which is great, but I couldn't get my ISO much below 400 so I just want to take some on ISO 64 um, in raw to get as much detail as possible. I'm going to go for F10 that is looking gorgeous. I'm going to um, zoom in and just uh, just play around with composition now. Um, starting with these two trees here as a pair, they are just fantastic side by side. There's still this line of light on the ground. It's looking great. So I'm just gonna zoom in to check my focus. It's looking good. I'll take another set of bracketed shots. Oh, the colour. So there's no mist today. So image separation is um, tricky. There's never any blooming mist when you want it with woodland photography, as far as I can see. <laughs> Very rarely. Um, but um, the, the colours and the light are stunning. So I couldn't ask for more, really. Um, right. Now, I think woodland photography, one of the really, really important parts of woodland photography is... Um, uh, is working on little close-ups and details and the light coming through these trees is just stunning at the moment. So I'm at around 105 millimeters now and I just want to focus on that beautiful light coming in. In fact, I might go slightly further in to about 150. Wow. Okay, so here is just that incredibly <laughs> beautifully shaped tree. It is a knot. Look, check this out. Fantastic. So let's try and photograph it. I'll put me back in focus again. Um, so uh, I'm just going to shoot it handheld, really. The light keeps on changing. I'm going to shoot it on F8. 
and um, quite a high ISO, probably go higher, so 800. Um, although I've got a tripod, it's really lovely to do some handheld work as well, even if it's a high ISO. Just gonna go around this tree, it's so stunning. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna get a perfect shot out of that, but it doesn't really matter. Experimentation is really, really important. Um, being able to just see a shape or a, um, an interesting part of a tree or structure and take it is really, really essential because otherwise you don't kind of get that feeling of a, a engagement and creativity with the space. Might have got the odd one there, we'll see. Okay, so, hi again. I couldn't resist, um, I don't know if you can hear me actually. Um, <laughs> I couldn't resist uh, using the river as a backdrop and, uh, and these fallen trees. So we're gonna give this a composition now um, with a polarizing filter and a big stopper on as well, just to get some smoothing out of the water. Let's see how we go. So, first of all, I've got this composition where this fallen tree is framing this, um, this uh, pair of trees coming up here. And it's looking stunning. It's looking fantastic. So I'm just gonna take my big stopper out and I'm gonna work out my um, exposure and composition first. So I want to get in quite a lot of those trees and the sky because that is beautiful. So I'm going to try a couple of different compositions. So at the moment, uh, my ISO, I'll take it down to around about 200 and see how we go. So on one third of a second with the polarizer on. Maybe that I don't want to use the big stopper because the big stopper might take it down too much. So if I, um, instead of using an ND filter, I'm going to take it down to ISO 64. And then it's a um, 1.6 second exposure. I think that might be enough without using this, actually. Let's see how we go. Um, I might take it down a little bit further by making my f-stop go to f11. Now I've got a three second exposure. That should be good, let's have a look. So at the moment, uh, my ISO, I'll take it down to around about 200 and see how we go. So on one third of a second with the polarizer on, it may be that I don't wanna use the big stopper because the big stopper might take it down too much. So if I, um, instead of using an ND filter, I'm gonna take it down to ISO 64, and then it's a um, 1.6 second exposure. I think that might be enough without using this, actually. Let's see how we go. Um, I might take it down a little bit further by making my f-stop go to f11. Now I've got a three second exposure. That should be good, let's have a look.
Right, so this is a completely different autumnal colour. So I've come out of uh, St Mary's Vale uh, to the much more well-known Sugarloaf Mountain. And uh, there it is, right in the back, if you can just about see. Uh, I'll take you up there in a moment. But the their, um, ferns have created this beautiful autumnal carpet. It is absolutely fabulous. I was photographing over the other side, um, probably with uh, <laughs> at least uh, 70, 80 mile an hour winds, maybe a little bit more than that. So funnily enough, I couldn't video. <laughs> I literally, I mean, my camera was getting blown out of my hand. I had to put my sturdy tripod on and I had to just hammer it with ISO. Um, to make sure that my shutter speed was fast enough um, and I was really glad I had my my sturdy tripod because the other one was just falling over all over the place anyway <laughs> I'll, I'll put some um, shots of, uh, of the other side of the sugar loaf up now So, um, I just wanted to end here really um, by looking at this beautiful autumnal landscape. Uh, the ferns, the bracken, the heather, all kind of turning this beautiful golden brown. And I just wanted to take some last handheld shots, um, uh, really kind of zooming in on little details in the landscape. So, um, to start off with then, sorry, I'm just gonna, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, Right, so start off with, I'm going to take my ISO down because I had it really, really high because uh, I was struggling to get any shots at all. So um, I had my ISO up at about 800 because I had to have enough um, shutter speed. I was getting buffeted by the wind constantly. I was kind of walking diagonally. So <laughs> anyway, good fun. Um, so I am going to take it down to about ISO 250, 400th of a second at f8, and that should be okay handheld here. It's much calmer on this size. So there are just these snaking, beautiful lines in the valley. And uh, I'm, as ever, um, when I'm um, when I'm working handheld. I'm just going to uh, have it on continuous high um, just to allow me to um, be able to bracket my shots if I need to. So there's an absolutely beautiful scene here down in the valley. Okay, so that's it. Autumn colour. Uh, it's just absolutely stunning out here today. I love it. I love Wales. And um, just seeing the contrast between St Mary's Vale and then up on the Sugarloaf now is fantastic. So, um, as I said previously, um, I've got a video that I'll put up here on um, my Nikon Z7 where I shot here before and you can see the differences between then and now in terms of the autumn colours really, really coming on. Until then, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.